You've moved to a new home and you're not sure about what water filtration you might need. Maybe you've moved to the, to the country and you've never been on well water before or lake water before and you've got all this water filtration equipment in your basement and have no idea what you have, how it works or how to maintain it. Maybe it's your first cottage and cabin that's on well or lake water. What's all this water filtration stuff all about? Relax. I've got you covered. I'm going to explain it all to you starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. This video is for the new to you homeowner who wants to understand what they have and what they need when it comes to water filtration. I'm going to explain to you how you can identify what all those tanks are in the basement, what they do, and how a well or lake water source is totally different than being on a municipal water source. I'll explain to you what to look for in terms of the sound and operation of that water filtration equipment and how to identify and look for the symptoms to check to see if that equipment is working or not. We'll be covering everything from a single filter housing that just removes dirt from your water or a carbon filter that removes chlorine from your water all the way up through water softeners, iron filters, tannin filters, ultraviolet disinfection systems, all the way through to help you identify what you have. If after the video you're still confused about what water filtration uh, equipment you have in your home, you can always email a picture to me and I can check it out for you and help identify it. When you're on a municipal water system in a city or a town, that municipality makes sure that the water is safe for your family. It's potable water. If you live in the country and your water source is your own well or you're drawing from a lake, you need to make sure that water is bacteria free for your family because if you don't, no one else will. So the most simple form of uh, water filtration is with a simple canister type filter housing like this one here. And you can use different types of filters inside. You can use a sediment filter like this one here that removes dirt from your water and they can be uh, set up with different micron ratings. The finer the filter, the lower the number, the coarser the filter, the higher the number. Or in the same filter housing, you can use a carbon filter like this one here. So on municipal water systems, these are great for removing chemicals from your water. Um, chlorine specifically is what we're talking about here. When you're on lake or well water system, again, these uh, carbon filters, they do double duty. They not only remove chemicals like herbicides and pesticides from your family's water, but it's also a taste and odor filter. Especially if you're drawing from uh, lake water, then it get, helps get rid of that fishy smell. Filter housings are available in a number of different sizes. This is a 10 inch slimline filter, so it uses a two and a half inch diameter filter cartridge inside. Or you can go with a larger size filter housing like this one here that uses a four and a half inch diameter filter cartridge inside. This is often called the big blue size, and uh, this is available in not only the 10 inch length, but it's also available in the longer 20 inch length. So Basically, the, the filter housing sizes are slimline for two and a half inch uh, filters or big blue for the four and a half inch filters and either one is available in 10 inch length or 20 inch length. Those are the standard sizes. If you're not sure about what micron sediment filter you need or you just want some more information, check out my video. I've got a link in the description down below. Now, whether you're on well water or municipal water source, you may very well need a water softener. So if you've got a piece of equipment that looks kind of like a tank like this one here in your basement and there's a reservoir beside it that holds salt, it may very well be a water softener. Now, if you're on lake water source, that it may look like a water softener, but it's probably a tannin filter, which is uses salt like a water softener. It just uses a whole lot more salt. Now, again, if you're on lake water, it's possible you could have a water softener and a tannin filter. So if you have two tanks that look pretty much identical and they both have salt reservoirs, that's, that's what you've got, a tannin filter and a water softener. Now, a municipal water source, uh, you definitely wouldn't have a tannin filter, so you just have a water softener. So a water softener uses salt um, and you keep adding salt to the water softener, kind of like you keep adding gas to your car. You use up that gas and the same with the water softener, it uses up that salt. So basically there's two configurations of water softeners. There's a single tank, which is the one like you see on your right, or the one on the left is a double tank system. So the single tank is actually a bit of a misnomer because there's actually a tank within a tank. So the outside tank is where the salt is housed and the inside tank, if you peek inside there, you'll see another fiberglass tank and that's where the media, that's, that's where actually the water softening happens. Now, if you're not sure about how a water softener works, I've got a link to my YouTube video 
video down below. I definitely encourage you to check that out. So another thing you may very well have is what's called an automatic backwashing filter. And that's actually what this guy is here. If you've got a single tank standing in your basement or crawl space, or that's included in a bunch with a bunch of other pieces of equipment, you may very well have an automatic backwashing filter. So on municipal systems, they're often used with carbon inside. So carbon is a taste and odor filter, and it removes chemicals from your water. So on a municipal water system, if you have a lot of chlorine in your water, this may very well be installed in your basement and uh, it's a sing it's a backwashing filter as the water passes through it removes the chlorine from your water it could also be a chloramine filter by the way what's chloramines chloramines is when a municipality uses ammonia and chlorine to uh, help disinfect the water and uh, so you need a chloramine filter to remove that uh, from your water so these are automatic backwashing filters so like I say after four or five days of, of, of uh, filtering out those chloramines or the chlorine from your water, they backwash to clean themselves and they go on from there. So it's a great system because you don't have to change the, the filters, you don't have to uh, add chemicals, it just every three or four, <laughs> every four to five days it goes through that process and cleans itself automatically. Automatic backwashing filters can also be used for well water or if you're drawing from a lake and if there's a lot of dirt in the water and those filters we talked about earlier, those cartridge filters are clogging too quick, quickly, then you can put an automatic backwashing filter on to remove the sediment from your water before it gets to the finer filters and you can also use one of those for a um, uh, carbon filter. So again, carbon gets rid of uh, chemicals from the water so when we're drawing from a surface water source uh, like a lake for example then it's great for you uh, removing the um, chemicals like herbicides and pesticides but it also gets rid of that fishy smell um, when it's a lake water source when you're on well water it, it works exactly the same way um, sometimes it's not as necessary to have an automatic backwashing system for well water because it's just the water just isn't all that dirty coming from a well at my home um, i'm on a well but I don't have an automatic backwashing system. I just find the cartridge filters for my ultraviolet disinfection system are uh, more than enough after my water softener and iron filter. And if you're looking for more detailed information about how those automatic backwashing filters work, I've got a great YouTube video that explains the whole process. I'll put a link in the description down below. So a reverse osmosis drinking water system like this one here can be used on any water source. So for municipal water sources, they're great because they um, remove the chlorine from the water, they lower the mineral content by 90%, they also get rid of um, pharmaceuticals and personal care products, they uh, get rid of lead. Um, like I say, they, they, they're, they're a great, great system for your drinking water. When you're on well or lake water, even if you have a whole house ultraviolet disinfection system, it gives you a second barrier to bacteria to for, like I say, just for your drinking water. And also if you have a little bit of tannins in your water, uh, the reverse osmosis will also get rid of that. And, uh, but it really gives you bottled water quality at that one faucet at your, at your kitchen tap. And um, if you have a, a, a fridge with a water dispenser or ice maker in it, it can also be connected to that. So you get those nice clear ice cubes that when they melt, you don't have that funny little white stuff at the bottom of your glass. In terms of maintenance for those reverse osmosis systems, this one is a five-stage Hume Water Saver 75 reverse osmosis system. So once a year, there's the three filters on the bottom and the skiddy one on the top needs to be replaced. The membrane itself will typically last anywhere from five to seven years, depending on a number of factors. Um, the, this system uses non-proprietary filters, so they're available everywhere. If your system is a proprietary system, then you have to go back to whomever manufactured the system to get those replacement filters, which is a huge pain. And if you want to learn more about how those reverse osmosis systems work, I've got a link in the description down below to my YouTube video. Check it out. Lots of great information there. Now, if you're on well water, you may very well have iron in your water and have sulfur in your water. What's sulfur? It's that rotten egg smell, often associated with cottages or well water. And uh, how do we get rid of those? We oxidize them. We oxidize the iron out of the water so that we can trap it in the tank. And then we backwash the media inside the tank every three days to keep cleaning that out. How do we get rid of the sulfur? Same thing. We oxidize it. So the beauty of an iron and sulfur filter is that you get two things for the price of one, basically. And uh, so this is our iron and sulfur filter up here. They're, they're in different configurations, but, uh, but like I say, they're a great system because they're totally chemical free.
And again, as I'm sure you can see, there's a recurring theme here. I've got a great YouTube video that explains how these iron and sulfur filters work in depth. And again, click the link in the description down below. It'll take you right to the video. Definitely want to check that out. And if you're looking for more information about the products we're talking about here today, definitely check out my website, watereastdoor.com in the US, watereastdoor.ca in Canada. And we do offer free shipping and discount pricing. And there's videos on pretty much every single product that explains not only how it works, but how to install and how to maintain. If you're on a well or lake water source, an ultraviolet disinfection system is pretty much mandatory to make sure that your water is bacteria free for your family. So it can consist of just a stainless steel housing like this with a separate uh, pre-filter sediment filter before it, or you can have a mini rack system like this one here where the water enters this side, goes through a sediment filter first to remove dirt from your water, goes through a carbon filter next to remove chemicals, herbicides, pesticides, that kind of thing. Also taste an odor filter and then from there goes through a UV light before it goes on to your whole cottage or cabin or lakefront home. UV systems are sized based on the rate of flow of water that you put through them. So for example, this system is rated at six gallons per minute. So you can put up to six gallons per minute of water through this system and it'll kill the bacteria. If you put 10 gallons per minute through it, it's not gonna do it. So we've got larger size systems that are 10 gallons per minute, 13 gallons per minute, 16 gallons per minute, or then we get into larger commercial systems that are up to 100 gallons per minute. And yet again, if you want to know how ultraviolet disinfection can make the well or lake water bacteria-free for your family, I've got a great video that shows, explains the whole process. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. So then we get to the little bit more obscure systems that are used for well or lake water. So one is a chemical injection system. So you can see in the, uh, in the chart here below, if you follow it from left to right, a chemical, usually chlorine is injected into the water, then the water flows through the pressure tank, and that chlorine has time to act on that water, and then as it passes through, then we need to, whatever we've oxidized out with that chlorine, um, we trap that in a backwashable filter, something like this, to remove that so that we can backwash it out. And then after that, it goes through another backwashable filter, or you can go with a cartridge type filter if you don't mind replacing the cartridges often. And, uh, and that's what traps the, uh, sorry, that's where we remove the chlorine from the water, and then it goes on to your whole home or cottage. So another technology that we occasionally run into out there is ozone. So ozone is a gas that's injected into the water that's a powerful oxidizer. So it can do a number of functions. It can uh, kill bacteria in your water, so it's an alternative to an ultraviolet light. It can um, oxidize the iron and the sulfur out of your water, so it's, a, it's a, um, an alternative to a chemical-free iron and sulfur filter can do a number of things. And uh, so if you have a system that looks something like this, it's ozone injection. If your water comes from a lake or a well, chances are you've got one of these tanks in the basement. And it's called a pressure tank. And they can be all different sizes. They can be, uh, they can range anywhere from a foot and a half in diameter by about two feet high. I've seen some as, as much as six feet tall and 24 inches in diameter. And how these tanks work is the, the water, the, the pump, pumps your water into these tanks and they're half air and half water and it's a pressure tank. So then when you run a glass of water or you're, you're, you're doing a small, you're doing dishes or something like that, the water come, is being pushed from this pressure tank out to your faucet. It doesn't come from the pump. So what happens is if you didn't have a pressure tank, that means every time you ran some water, even for a small glass of water, the pump would have to come on and shut off. Well, that's the worst thing for a pump is to come on and shut off. So this way the water accumulates inside this pressure tank so that when you run water on and off, the pump doesn't have to keep coming on and off. And it makes that pump last a lot longer. If you have some other type of water filtration equipment and you don't know what you have, you don't know what it's called, you don't know how to maintain it or how to service it, no problem. Take a picture, email it to me at info at watereastore.com and I can check it out for you and let you know what you've got. Click here for your next video on water filtration and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.